Greetings, nerds. I'm sorry I can't be with you today. Uh, we're having a math meeting. It's exciting. But you're on 5-4 dilations. Put that at the top of your notes and try this up as a warm-up. Try this out as a warm-up. Um, we've got a piece of a line. We've got the midpoint, M, and another point, I don't know, P. And we can't see the other, the third endpoint. I don't know where it is. Maybe because there's a zombie cat in the way eating his own eyeball and his brains are falling out. I don't really know why we can't see the other point. But uh, we should try to figure out how to find it. Now, you can probably figure it out um, graphically walking up and over. But also make sure you can do it algebraically. So see, how, see if you remember how to do that. Pause me and try that. Go. Pause me. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, so one boring way to do this is just count up. So you could say, like, all right, this is at negative 5, uh, negative 3, 5, so, and I want to go to negative 6, 2. So I have to go from here backwards to here. So that's backwards 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2, 3. So it's backwards 3 and, and up. Three. And so I do the same thing, backwards three, one, two, three, and up three, one, two, excuse me, kitty. Right? So it seems like this would be this, uh, this x value minus three more, so that sounds like negative nine. And the y value, we went up three, so that sounds like positive one. So in the not impressing anyone, counting on your fingers, like fourth graders, I'd guess nine, negative nine one. If you, uh, you could also do it kind of the smoother way, the more impressive way, which is saying the average, this, this midpoint's x value, this is x average, is the average of this one, I'm gonna pretend I don't know it, call it x, call it y. It's the average of x and the other x, so it'll be three plus negative three divided by two, it'll be the average. Oh, but we know this value is negative six. So let's throw the negative six in there. All right. And then we can multiply by two and solve for x. This is like saying the if you add up the two x's, this one which we don't know and this one which we do know, the average of them should be negative six. That's the theory behind midpoint. Um, so multiply by two, you get 12. And then add three, so you get, oh, negative nine, uh, just like we thought. Pretty slick. So that one's negative nine. And then you'd play the same game for the y value. You'd say this y value and this y value, when you average them, you just say minus, average them, you should get the midpoint, the y, the midpoint's y value. We know it's negative two. So multiply negative four equals y, oh, minus five. Ah, minus. 5, add 5, and you get, oh, add 5, and you get 1 is y, just like we thought. Bing. Now, the count on your fingers and toes method is kind of boring, but it works for simple things. That, that'll get you a 4. This you can do with other things, like if we have uh, expressions in here, like if we don't have the number 6, but we have something like x plus 2, you can still do this method with the, if you have uh, slightly more complicated things. So, Keep that in your repertoire. You have any homework questions? Anybody? Anybody? No? That's either good because you understood it all or bad because you're not actually asking the questions. Uh, but if you do have questions, uh, let me know and we can do them next time. Cool. We're looking at dilations. Oh, speaking of that, I got to dilate this down. Can't see it behind my head. Uh, all right, a dilation is a change in the size of an object. Uh, you're either dilating things and making them bigger, or you're dilating them and making them smaller, but you're changing the size. Sometimes we call it enlargement, uh, a, a, a dilation where your original object gets bigger, and the reduction is where it gets smaller. Uh, we base these on a scale factor, and a scale factor is the ratio of the side lengths of the image and the original. For example, if this is our original, and our side length here is 2, and we mess with it, and now our side length is 4, we've doubled the side length. 
if you didn't know this was 2, if you didn't say, oh, 2 times 2 is 4, you could take the ratio of long side, or sorry, second, the image side, and divide by original side, and you'd get the scale factor. So that's, uh, so maybe that's what you want to write down for scale factor. So image side, side, divided by the uh, object side, the original. Gives you the scale factor. And it doesn't really matter um, which side you use. For example, if we use this side, this side is 1. Its corresponding side is this. It's 2. When you go 2 divided by 1, you get the same ratio, 2. Eh. Right? So that's a scale factor. If you, so let's, so let's choose, let's choose B to be our original. Let's look at B as the original, uh, the, let's use this as our object. So if we went to here, if we went, made this bigger, we took this side, this side's four, and this side is one, two, three, four, five, six. This side is six. So the scale factor is this divided by this is 6 divided by 4. It's 3 halves. Oh, no, it's a fraction. Oh, it's just 1.5, uh, the scale factor of 1.5. Like You're just multiplying by 1.5. That's not scary, right? This is bigger than 1, which means if your scale factor is bigger than 1, it means you have an enlargement. If your scale factor is 1, it stays the same size, right? Um, on the other hand, if you go from here to here and you say, oh, this is this length is 4, this length is 2, this is our new image. So we would go image over object, right? Image over object. Image length is 2, so this length is 2. Object length is 4. This gives you a scale factor of a half, right? So this side, 4 is getting half as big, 2. Scale factor is less than 1, so b is getting smaller, right? This is a reduction. Neat? Just vocabulary. Uh, but this, I think, is key, that you're doing image over object. It's really, it's really uh, enticing to be like, oh, big one over small one. No, 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 no. It's the future one over the past one, right? Or it's the original. It's the new one over the original. Neat. <clears throat> okay. So, nah, 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 nah. Um, when you enlarge something, you can do it many different ways. And one of those, uh, it depends on where you want to make your, uh, they, well, they call it the center of enlargement, the middle of your exciting uh, stretch, right? So, with this, this is P, Q, R. And if we uh, dilate this, if we enlarge this, we get P prime, Q prime, R prime, right? No surprise. One of the things that's happening, well, this is two, right? This is two units, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is two, this is six. So the scale factor is six over two, it's three, right? It's obviously getting three times bigger. And this is three, right? this is one, and this is one, two, three. So also, three over one, and this is whatever that is, and whatever that is, they're gonna be three times, um, three times the length. And this is kind of nice because somebody could tell you, oh, this side is two, one, making stuff up uh, three units long, and then you'd say, oh, well, therefore, this one should be three times as big as that, so three times three should give you nine. That's why we like scale factors, uh, because they help you look at one side and multiply. The strange thing is that this also does the same thing. That's one. That's three. That's two. That's six. So this is this is uh, a dilation of three also, but it's kind of in a different way. It's because the center of enlargement is in a different spot. So what you're doing with all the centers of enlargement is your is if you take this point and measure how much distance over to p from the center of enlargement. This is two units. Then the distance to p to p prime is going to be three times as big. So this distance should be six units, and it is one, two, three, four, five, six. 
It also works in multiple dimensions. So here's Q. Q is 2 over and 1 up. So Q prime should be 3 times as far over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3 times as far up, 1, 2, 3. Right? So this, so, so Q prime should be 6 over and 3 up. Yeah? That same thing is happening here, but O is in a different spot. So, let me make this a little bigger so we can see it. O, I think, is half a unit under here. So if you're going up to P, you're going one over and a half up. One over and one half up. So go to, if, if our scale factor is three, we're going three times as far over. So let's do green. One, two, three over. And then three times as far up as this. So one half, two halves, three halves, right? One half, two halves, three halves. Right, and that puts us in, in where P is. Um, you could do the same with Q. You could say, hey, Q is, or let's do R. Yeah, let's do Q. Uh, Q from O to Q is, is 1 over. So since we have a scale factor of 3, we'll be 3 times as far over for uh, Q prime. 1, 2, 3. But then going up, O to, o to Q is 1 half two halves, three halves, All right? So this is three halves. So we want to go, th which is like one and a half. So we want to go three times as far as that. Now one way to do this is go three times three halves, which is nine halves, which is four and a half, because it's eight halves and one more half. 8 halves is 2, and the other half is the 4.5. So it's uh, 1, 2, 3 over, and then from here, it's 4.5 up. So there's, there's the half, and then there's 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, let's do that one more time with R just to make sure we're all on the same page. Because the halves might throw you off. Oh no, fractions! Oh, I didn't see the fractions coming. Uh, let's go from O to, or sorry, let's go from R to R prime. So this will be one, two, three. Oh, three to R. So it'll be three times that length to R prime. So it'll be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry about the jitters. And then. From O up to R, it's only half. So we go three times as high. So three halves. One, two, three. And there's R. Neat. You try. Uh, find the image of each. Uh, you might sketch these and enlarge them. It's gonna, they're going to need a little bit more space. This one's not. Okay, pause me and try that. All right, from here, this is scale factor two. This point is not any distance from its enlargement or from its center of enlargement, so it's gonna stay there. This is one unit away, so now it's gonna be two units away. This point is two units to the side, so it'll be two, uh, oh, scale factor of two, right? So it'll be twice as far. So it'll be this far, twice. So it'll be over there, right? Uh, this point is two over, one up, so it'll be four over and two up, which makes sense, so like that's what that looks like. This is a scale factor of three. This is one unit over, so the new corresponding point is gonna be one, two, three units over. This point is two units over, so it's going to be three, uh, two times three is six, so it'll be six units over, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm off the map, but you got it. And this is, Two, one over, two down. So one over, so it'll be three over, six down. One, two, three, four, five, six. It should look like that. Cool. So this is this point was one over, three down. This corresponding point should be three over. Oh, yeah, 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 
sorry, this was two down, sorry, sorry, two down. And two times three is six, so two, six down. This is the center of enlargement. We got a scale factor of two, or sorry, half. So this is one, two, three units away. So now it's only going to be, th it's three units away. So we multiply by a half. So three halves is one and a half. So it'll be there. This point is two units away. It'll be only one. This is going to be half. This is going to be one. Ooh, this point, these points, let's do that point. This point is one, two, three, one, two. So three over, oh, three over, so it'll be one and a half over and one up, right? Because this was three units over, or sorry, three units, yeah, three units sideways, one, two, three. So we want half of that, and three halves is uh, 1.5. So now it's only going to be 1.5 over. And then this was two up, so now it's only going to be one up. So it's there. Okay. And same with the rest of these. Uh, this will be this will be three over. So instead of three over, three over, it'll be one and a half over. And this is two down. So instead of two down, it'll be there. So it'll look like something like that. Oh, this point is one over two up. So half over one up. So it'll look like that. Yeah, that's cool. Oh. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. This is three over two down. So one and a half over one down. Yep. Like that. And then a little mirror. Voila! Cool. Neat. The interesting thing about these is <laughs> we say that like a scale factor two, this is a scale factor of, uh, this is a scale factor two because if this is two units, becomes four units. It's easy to, or it's uh, caref careful not to say, oh, it's twice as big because it's not twice as big. The side is twice as big. This side is twice as big. It went from three to six. But this thing, if you had to paint it, is six, is six units, right? This is two by three, this area is six. But if you go, f if you double everything, it's four by six. Now this area is 24. We went from six units squared to 24 units squared. And that's a change not of two, but of two twice, because we're changing this by two, and we're changing that by two. And so really, this is a change of, of two, two twice. We're doubling it twice which makes it four times bigger to get from here to here. Interesting. Also, if you do the same thing with the volume, if you make this one unit, this has a volume of six cubic units. Um, and if you double all the sides, this becomes six, this becomes four, and this becomes goes from one to two. But if you look at the volume change, the volume of the first one, if you counted up all the blocks, is six cubic units, and the volume of the second one is 48 cubic units. You didn't make it twice as big because uh, because you've multiplied by two in three dimensions. So it started at six, but then it got, well, it got three, it got twice as big in this dimension, in the up and down dimension, twice as big as the over dimension, and twice as big in the up dimension. And when you multiply six, by nine, uh, sorry, six by eight, you get that 48, which is kind of interesting. That's uh, more kind of seven and eight stuff. Anyway, bunch of problems in your home learning. You got plenty to do. Let's try 16D. We're doing the whole thing. Uh, make me proud, and I'll see you later. Bye.